morning everybody good morning good morning today is our last day in new orleans i've been woken up i've been woken up and um our tour guide will be here in 30 minutes so they already called they already woke us up so we are about to pack and get ready to head out. Last night we had a blast. We did a ghost tour at two cemeteries. We did one for educational purposes and the other one for paranormal activity. I was trying to get Alex to record me um, asking my questions because he gave the guy gave us some metal stick things, pendulum. I don't even know what they were. And then you ask your question and then um, I have a video. Huh? Oh, Alex did have a video of it. Um, the guys were a tad bit afraid. <laughs> guys, me and Polo and, and Alex were afraid while we were out there. And the whole time, I'm like excited, like, yes. <laughs> Let me talk to my ancestors. <laughs> Let me talk to somebody. Somebody say something to me. Because I know that it's real. I know. Uh, I just want to. No, talk, ask questions. So I did, and it was pretty believable. Um, yeah, like I said, so we're gonna pack real quick and then probably run through the city real quick. Doris and her husband are pretty much done. After we do this tour, they'll be leaving to head back. They're actually leaving to go to another city, fly to another city real quick to get lunch and then go back to their home and I appreciate them for coming with me to make my birthday getaway to New Orleans I really wanted to come here for my birthday um, making it extra special and fun so all right I'm gonna go ahead and get dressed and get ready because I'm running out of time to get ready okay let's go all right we're going on our second tour Hello, Sims. That's our MMS. Sims? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I like that outfit, though. Well, I like your outfit. Really? Oh, wow. I will be hitting her up. got one more pickup to make but we're gonna like a little bonus stop so my friend mark and his wife megan opened a little room to story about a year ago we're gonna make a quick little pit stop there um we got people waiting on us to get picked up there too so it worked out pretty good um so the distillery i know it's some people for mm -hmm. let me pull up just a little bit so we're on this incline <laughs> Yeah, we're from Florida. Oh yeah? All right, this is the distillery. Oh, 
I might want to get a frozen drink. Patrick, this couple right here is already paid for their bottle, and then the lovely woman in the polka dot this next, she has not cashed out yet. Both. <laughs> I'm going to try both. We have our cocktails right down there. If y'all don't, if it's too early to do straight shots of rum, I understand. But also, oh, this will be a straight shot? Well, a little. This is the banana. I'm me. <laughs> you don't you don't sell like little mini bottles? No, we do not. We've only been open 14 months. So we're not oh, that's nice. That, uh, we're making the bottles. But people look on us in the future because it is getting no work. I like Ooh. it. Let me try this. We will add more banana clusters in a few days, y'all. If you Tastes are pretty good. Tom, we're open 12 to 7 Monday through Friday. Oh, that's a... That, that hit me in my chest. Oh, I felt that. Oh, I feel it. Lord have mercy. In my chest, girl, right at the top. That's strong. <laughs> I want the. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, oh, poor photo. Y'all, I, I feel it going down. All the way there. Which one is it? What do I want to drink? Mm -hmm. I was going to get a frozen drink because I think we're going to be really hot, but I keep the water what we have. Yeah, good water. Yeah. Go to mass or go to jail. Take wow. your pick. Mm -hmm. No cremation, Before no divorce. It'd be Catholic or jail till the purchase. That's Before it. To go to Ain't that on the right here, this house sits on the half its original lot. Half. 1868 Elms Mansion, built for the niece of Zachary Taylor, the only president from Louisiana. Though he was actually born in Kentucky, but whatever. Uh, on the left, <laughs> if you'd like to have a famous neighbor, this house is for sale. So look behind the house on the left that's for sale. You see a pink house with the yeah. palm trees? Yeah. Yeah. That's the back. It oh. used to be a church. It spans two lots. No? Yeah, well, the stairs have actually been um, replaced. Um, that's not the original staircase. The location is original though. The column capitals. Nice. Iron and stone don't exist here naturally. It has to be brought in. Nice. The more iron, the more stone. Typically the more uh, argent, right? The owner has this way to show off. Yes. <laughs> Coming up on the right, 1833 is Lafayette Cemetery 1. This is the oldest standing cemetery on this side. The Catholic Church does not allow filming in their cemeteries. Anytime you see a cemetery in a movie or TV show, it's this one. 007, Live and Let Die, the originals, NCIS New Orleans, Double Jeopardy, Your Honor, they all use this one. Mm. Y'all remember Double Jeopardy? Yeah. yeah. Ashley Judd, Tony Jones. It's on Netflix right now if you want to rewatch it. Um, originals? Yes. Yes. My wife is the biggest originals fan. Sight Unseen in 2018 for 4.2. To Paul McCartney's manager. The renovations have been complete. It is the home, so it's little corn stalks on the fence. <laughs> 4.2 million needs work. Wow. Uh, so technically, technically, New Orleans, the most expensive real estate in New Orleans by sale price is in Audubon Place, which is further down St. Charles behind us, but it's, a, it's the gated community. Uh, Django. The front of Candyland is a facade, it's a set. When they walk into Candyland, it's actually this house. Uh. So this would be used for the inside shots of Candy Lane. Anybody saw Django? Yes. Yes. Django Dune Fox, Leonardo DiCaprio, Samuel Jackson. Yes, yes. That's Stephen. Nice. Oh, Stephen. Uh, it's called the Seabold Manor. It's regarded the best interior in Uptown New Orleans. It shows Academy for Exceptional Young Girls. In the show, they say Miss Ruba Show, but I think Madame Ruba Show sounds a lot better. So if you saw Kevin, here's the witch school. If you didn't see Coven, here's a fancy house. <laughs> 1856, this is, this is the Buckner Manor. The house is only barely 9,000 square feet. When the Buckner family did not return following the U.S. Civil War, it was sold at auction. It became the Sule Business School of New Orleans. They added on to the back and dormitory space. Today, it's almost 20,000 square feet. If you get a chance, though, seriously, everybody check it out. Um, it is partnered with Smithsonian, but not run by Smithsonian, okay? 
The difference is, <laughs> if it was run by a Smithsonian, it'd be free. Mm. If it's not run by a Smithsonian, it's $28. Mm. Sorry. However, now, you've come at the perfect time. Wes, on the left is the Cabildo Capital for Government, where the Louisiana Purchase was signed. That is a state museum today. You can walk into the room and actually see the Louisiana Purchase document on display. They are participating in Museum Month. That museum is free if you buy a participating membership at, like, the Ogden, for example. French Quarter was opened by a German named Fred Conniger. <laughs> so, Fred started selling fried as it should be. As by the 1950s, they wanted to differentiate with a fancy sound and French name, so they started to call them beignets. Uh, beignet is strictly marketing. Uh, it's just to make them sound fancy, you know, because everything sounds fancier with a French name. here by the gate his name is Al good guy he sells bottled water for a dollar when we get to the rest stop they will be 250 and uh, they do he does sometimes have beer if you ask him really nice he might sell you a long neck all right cemetery again different one remember we walking backwards when we get when we leave here we'll walk backwards when we <laughs> <laughs> Cemetery. I don't forget what he said. I think he said cemetery number one. I'm not sure. This is a normal. This is this is how all graveyards everywhere in the world look like. But the graveyards or cemeteries in West in our in our Western um, countries, our Western country cities, they um, are in the ground at the port. The they got a regular mausoleum yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah you're all gonna, you're all gonna get drunk. <laughs> but I don't think this guy knows as much as that guy from last night. I don't think he knows as much. I mean, he's a great tour guy, but he's like, y'all can go ahead and walk around. Wait, what? You want us to walk around? You're not gonna continue to talk to us? You're not gonna continue to tell us what's going on? I think it's pretty cool, though. I ain't gonna lie. It's pretty cool. Then my husband was like, oh, there are two, two people down there. I said, they're from Fort Lauderdale. They good. We <laughs> no, we're not good. We late. <laughs> we're about to get up. <laughs> oh, my God, y'all. It didn't seem like it was 10 minutes. We literally no, just got out here. Yeah. 10 minutes? Let us tour. Let, <laughs> let us tour for real. Let us tour for real. All right, y'all. We running back to the, the shuttle. That was a quick... That was quick. It was like five minutes out here. Oh, yeah. Don't forget. <laughs> no, we went on a ghost tour last night. And that's what they said. That's what, that's what we can right We're going to. Yeah. yeah we did, we, it was so much fun. <laughs> We're not telling no, you, but no, it was so, no. so much fun. Just know that. Yeah, what? Yeah. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we enjoyed it. No, we. No, no, no. But it's at night, midnight. So just imagine. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, we did the midnight uh, one. It's still, still going to be fun. It's still, <laughs> it's still going to be fun, though. 
She's gonna enjoy it. But I gotta walk. We gotta walk out backwards. I can't. <laughs> I'm not taking that chance. <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> no, you gotta do it. Do it anyway. <laughs> do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Nothing to be attached to you. Oh, I'm gonna go to the video. You can leave this here. Yeah. That lady and her daughter? Yeah. That'll be me and Nayana traveling. I don't know. You came right on time. <laughs> this is Cafe Du Monde. Wait a minute. Okay. Cafe Du Monde. Yes. Where we were. Yeah, the original was the French Quarter, so this is a. How many they got? Three? What? Two. How many they got Cafe Du Monde? Oh, no, they got several, oh. but this is not the original. Okay. Girl, I was like, what? When I say, can I get a beignet? Can I get some extra? Some extra sugar? sugar. Yeah. Regular. Yeah, he can put a lot of sugar in there. <laughs> yeah, this is what I told him came up to. You can put it in there. Yeah, thank you. Dang, you think we should get some more so we can take on the um, flight? Is that coat? No. <laughs> Ooh, that got my coat right there. Nice. Okay, no problem. Look at that coat, y'all. Uh. So, um, white cheese and cheese. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get some more. 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 Yeah, See what's in the bag. Ooh. Oh, it's not filled up with nothing. He said that these are called donuts first. Be careful with it. Yeah, it's all over <laughs> me already. All over my bag. He was right. All right, so apparently we were supposed to shake the bag. It's at the bottom of the bag. Can y'all see? All that pot at the bottom. Supposed to close it up. Look at that. That's how it's supposed to look. That's how it's supposed to look. Valid. His is coated. Completely coated. Yeah. Did not know that. This is good. Oh, that makes sense. It would taste good. Mm hmm. Doris, it really tastes good. Put it all over. Mm -hmm. Big difference. On the news here, they say, looks like the worst is over. Huh. Pumps are working, others are holding. We'll be back to normal in six months. This guy is breathing a sigh of relief. Hours go by. Then, the first breach opens up. And another. And another. And now the city is filling up. Where the heck is all this water coming from? Mm. It's not the river. It's the lake. That jog to the east. We thought it was getting so good. Turned out to be really bad. 
Because to our right is a connection that goes from the Gulf into the lake. The John Cleese brings the surge from the Gulf almost directly into the lake. Now there's two really bad things happening right now. Um, one, the lake is pushed up to 22 feet above sea level. The thing is, these canals are supposed to flow from the middle of the city, south north of the lake, down to the lake. We have never prepared for a scenario in which the lake goes up. But the other thing is, Katrina's in front of us, passing to our east, rotating counterclockwise. The winds are crossing here left and right. The canals are supposed to go right left. The wind chokes the water down, down, down. Middle of the city, water hits the pump, stops going down, starts going up, up, up. The levees start to overfill, the over top. Uh, the canals breach, the levees break, break. And the city is filling up backwards, north, south. Not a drop in the river. The lake is going to flood New Orleans. We can't stop it. Uh, to stop this from happening, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, coming up in a little bit, we're going to see where the levee broke. So, the levees we're talking about are probably not the levees you're thinking of. I think when I say levee, people imagine this big earthen berm kind of thing. That's not what broke. What broke is called a sheet pile levee. So imagine a steel sheet that's pile driven in the earth. The part that sticks out the water or at the ground is Captain Concrete. It looks like a concrete wall because it sort of is. The earth and levees didn't break. The sheet pile levees did. So they only fixed the levees where they broke. The repaired section looks slightly different. So it's going to be on the right. You got to look hard, but if you know what to look for, you can see where the breach was. So on the left, the earth and levees didn't break. No earth and levee failed. Only on the right, the sheet pile levees, the concrete eye wall levees. The section built before Katrina had lines that go up and down. Like, almost looks like it's corrugated. The section built after doesn't. So, with the lines pre-Katrina, without the lines built after Katrina. That's the breach. So, you're looking at the second breach in the city right there. Wow. Now, the first breach is just on the other side. So, this can now have the first, and this will be the second breach in the world right, right there. So, with lines pre-Katrina, without the lines broke about a city block. Yeah. So this is a drainage canal. It's supposed to go right, left. Katrina went left, right. Yeah. And the reason I come across here is I can do this. Look at the height of the water. Look at the water. Mm -hmm. Look at the levee. Uh-huh. Look at the water. That's sea level. Look at the water. Look at the levee. And you ready? Mm -hmm. Look at the houses. Oh! oh. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah. This is so the first reach is on this side. Not hard to believe Whoa, that this is Jesus. the lowest neighborhood in New Orleans. Oh my God. So here we're averaging about six feet below sea level. Oh, Jesus. The that's average bad. flood depth here would be about 14 feet. Damn. So that's um, almost five feet taller than the bus we're in right now. So this neighborhood is the lowest part of the city, site of the first reach. That must mean we're in the seventh ward, seventh Gentilly. Ward. Mm. So this seventh ward, Gentilly, again, side the first reach and the lowest neighborhood in New Orleans. Jesus. Oh. Seventh ward. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about you know the recovery and what makes this substantially different than like say other parts of the city. There was a lot of water here, but um, a lot of it has to do with how the water comes in. There, we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, so I said, this is Seventh Ward Gentilly. Hey, Gary, what's a ward, and is that the same thing as a parish? No, Gary, thanks for asking. So in 1812, we became the 18th state after Ohio. And normally the U.S. had these invisible land divisions called counties. Counties are great for using, uh, creating government and voting. Things you don't need when you're ruled by a monarchy, right? Uh, the only land divisions here used by the Catholic Church called parishes, we kept those. So we are today the only state with parishes, not counties, they work the same. Parish, county, functionally equivalent. Uh, later though, we're going to have problems. All right, so right now, we're facing east, we're crossing, we're leaving the seventh ward, when we cross the street, we'll be in the eighth ward. So we're traveling east, so leaving the seventh, now in the eighth ward. By the 1840s, 50s, we will have here 
the highest per capita death rate in the U.S. Wow. To consolidate, to conserve resources, New Orleans annexes the American city behind us, uh, formerly known as the city of Lafayette. The two become one. The people on the American side are unhappy with their fancy French-speaking government. They demand English-speaking representation. They got it. We now need a way to divide the city from the voting areas. Some of you call them districts, precincts, jurisdictions. Um, older cities, Chicago, D.C., Milwaukee, yes? Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Thank you. Uh, New Orleans, they're called wards. So your ward is telling you where you're voting at and who your councilman is. Uh, in most cities today, they're called like districts or precincts or jurisdictions, but it's all basically the same thing. Uh, originally, if you went west, which is right, the original western side of the city would be the Garden District. That'd be the first ward. If you travel east, second ward, third ward, fourth ward, fifth ward, sixth ward, seventh ward, there's the eighth ward here. And to the left, a little further east, you're in the ninth ward, huh? Like they did on purpose. Uh, the original city, once it was consolidated, is wards one through nine. As the city grew, they expanded into 17 wards, but 1 through 9 are continuous, or, yeah, continuous across, and they're the original city after the consolidation. So, basically, we started at 1, and we're just working our way to 9. Uh, so, basically, we're just going across the entire original city after consolidation. So, what have we done since Katrina to try to make sure this doesn't happen again? And parts of our city are 6 feet below sea level. There's a country, though, who has areas more than 20 feet below sea level. Yeah, the Netherlands, right? Holland. Uh, we wouldn't talk to those people. And one of the ideas we brought back here is uh, flood walls or floodgates. On the northern end of every canal, there's a wall or a gate that can shut them off. That way they can't fill it backwards. Also, the earthen levees that front the lake are taller, wider, stronger than was here before. One of the waterways that contributes significant flooding to the city has been closed entirely. We do have more pumps. The Army Corps says this will be enough to stop the city from filling up in the next one. Though I really hope we don't need to find out. It was supposed to be done in 2008. It would be completed August 2018. So, yeah, pretty close. One syllable off. Yeah. Uh, the new flood control system costs $14.6 billion, B billion dollars. It is complete. Any questions about anything up till now or Katrina or otherwise? Yep. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, so the question was, um, most states have a law system based on common law. Is were so small, took days to fill up. So even though the water could have reached 8, 10 feet plus, it will take days to get there, leaving those structures intact. So most of the city, big area, small breaches, fills up slowly. The water is removed relatively quickly, and the structures can be fixed. And we saw that. Right by where the levees broke, we saw that clearly there were houses fixed because the water comes up slow, oh, it's removed so quick, and we can fix those structures. What's well, different about the ninth ward in front of us now, once we cross the street left right, we will be in the ninth ward, so we're leaving the eighth, again traveling east into the ninth ward. Uh, ninth ward is the eastern edge of the city. Katrina passed to our east. So this is the closest part of the city to Katrina's landfall which means it saw the highest wind speeds, which all makes sense. Uh, but it wasn't just the wind speeds that became the biggest problem. The biggest problem started 100 years ago. There's a canal in front of us that that cuts through the ninth ward, connecting the lake behind it, or the lake to the left to the river to the right. Uh, this waterway is deep enough for ocean-going vessels to draft, wide enough for tugs and barges to go side by side, and driven from the highest wind speeds in the city, the water's pushed from the lake left, right, down, down, down. Now, we know the river's higher. There's a lock there. Of course there is. Water hits that lock right by the river, down, 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 hits the lock, up, up, up. And the levees fail into the ninth ward. 
in about 40, 40, 40 different places. So now what we're talking about is a much smaller part of the city, but taking water from a much bigger source from pretty much every angle. So the water enters the ninth ward here, it does so all at once. Like a tidal wave is pushed across it. The damage is immediate. The flooding is immediate. And because of the size, severity, and the number of reaches, the water sits here the longest. The plugs are in place here three weeks later, three weeks after. The pumps kick on and slowly the water starts to go down. A week later, Rita hits towards Texas. Rita will knock out the plugs and re-flood the ninth ward. So most of the ninth ward goes underwater for almost two months. So here the water comes in the fastest, the highest wind seeds, it sits the longest. But one of the things that makes Katrina worse is the water that's er, that's coming in here originates in the Gulf, which is going to mean seawater or salt water. Water is bad, but salt water is worse because it's corrosive. And everywhere you see a lot here, there's a house pre-Katrina. And even when the water is removed, it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. There's no gas station, there's no grocery store, there's no public school, there's no fire station, there's... And that's the little stuff. The big stuff is there's no utilities, there's no power, there's no running water. And there's really no point in fixing a house you can't live in. If you're homeless, jobless, carless in Houston, trying to return to New Orleans, it doesn't make sense to try to fix a house you can't live in. And until the most basic utilities come back, you can't do much of anything. And here, Ninth Ward, for much of the Ninth Ward, there's no power and no water for almost a year and a half. Wow. So mm. even after being underwater for two months, these properties will sit baking in the sun for a year until somebody can come back. And who can wait a year and a half? And even if you did, what do you have left to come back to? And the answer is maybe not a whole lot. Yeah. So coming back to the hardest hit parts of the city, like the Ninth Ward, became very difficult if not close to impossible. So when we look at population, uh, it's not really a surprise to see that the Ninth Ward is still the hardest hit part of the city. Uh, so population here estimates pre-Katrina put Ninth Ward at uh, here over 30,000. According to the 2010 census, population is probably 5,600. That's five years later. And population here today, the city estimates it's probably uh, 16 or 17,000. Oh, on the left. William France Public School on the left. In 1960, attended by Ruby Bridges from Massachusetts. Six-year-old oh, yeah. Ruby Bridges. This is the wow. first... Oh, we're stopped, don't worry. Hold on one second. The first public school in Louisiana to desegregate. Uh, her picture on the steps was in every newspaper, every news station. Norman Rockwell did a painting Ruby reopen. Ruby uh, flew down from her house in Chicago opening ceremony. They did unveil a bronze sculpture of Ruby in the courtyard. Yeah. Um, from private groups, you know, like um, Habitat and... Um, Salvation Army, uh, Red Cross and stuff, but um, there was a big federal program aimed at helping out the Ninth Ward, but it really kind of backfired. What's the funeral? Yeah, I wouldn't call it corruption. It was, uh, I don't know. I, I'll, t I'll talk about it in a second. I'll tell you about it. All right, coming up in just a little bit. Corruption's always on the table here, though. Coming up in a little bit, we're going to come up to Musicians Village. Hopefully. Uh, Musicians Village is a work between Habitat for Humanity, Oprah Winfrey, the Marcelluses, former president Jimmy Carter, Dave Matthews Band. It was the idea, though, of Harry Connick Jr. Uh -oh. Connick said, what would New Orleans be without musicians? He said from his house in Connecticut. So he came up with this. Yeah, we love Connick. He's lived in New Canaan, Connecticut for like 20 years. He don't live here. Good guy, though. Uh, on the left, this is a high school, middle school. Uh, that was flooded, of course, but it had been closed up since, like, 1990. So they sold it to Habitat. They redeveloped it into Musician's Village. Mm. And 
people that got these homes were artists, musicians that lived here before to give them a place to come back to, and their families, of course. Coming up on the left is uh, Ellis Marcella Center for Music. It's like a town hall performing arts center. Some of the kids uh, get their music lessons here. Ellis uh, passed away last year at 81 years old, father of Branford and Winton Marcellus. Uh, he was a three-time Grammy winner. So people that got these homes were not a gift, were not given to people. They would agree to pay 150000 but after you live here for 10 years and you do 300 hours of community service, half that falls off. So it's your house for That's good. 75 plus interest. So not a bad deal. Yeah. Coming up in a little bit, we're going to see a house with a search marker still on it. So when the water came up, there was a real and rational fear that people could be stuck in these properties. So mostly National Guard came through. They searched properties looking for bodies, survivors, and environmental hazards. There's a marker coming up in the right in a little bit. We'll see. Coming up on the right, third house on the right, next to the door in the blue paint, you'll see the search marker. So the search marker tells us some information about the search that would, would have been done here following Katrina and every house. Every house had one like this, but on the right, so on the right by the door, you'll see the search uh, Search marker. It tells us the search September 12, 2005. Search by Task Force Wild Category from West Virginia. On the left, that would mean zero survivors, which is good numbers and zero bodies in the bottom. Every house to search, just like this, uh, looking for bodies, survivors, and environmental hazards. You do not, on the right side of the mural, you do not have to buy insurance if you own your house outright. Uh, so something like 80% of homeowners in the ninth floor did not have flood insurance. So four to five homeowners, nine four did not carry flood insurance. That means most people that own their houses that paid them off, they've been there forever. Those are a lot of the same people that got nothing to come back. Damn. Um, so there was a federal program designed supposed to help those people, but didn't really. Uh, on the left, this is another protest mural. I like this one a whole bunch. Oh wow! That's yeah. You know, the streetcar comes out almost this far. So you can actually, you can not quite this far, but you can almost get this far by streetcar. So we're just a few blocks off where the streetcar line stops, but if you wanted to walk down this way, uh, you can almost get this far by streetcar. Um, so the federal government developed a program called Road Home. Uh, Road Home was federal, uh, funded with nine billion federal dollars. It was aimed at people who got less money from insurance than it took to fix their properties. Uh, so the average house in New Orleans is like 1,400 square feet. To fix a home that's flood damaged, there's a bunch of coal murals coming up on the right uh, and on the left. There's a big Frida on the right. Oh, look at me. So <laughs> uh, to fix a flood damaged house, you're talking about $100 per square foot. So the number they came up with was 100, 150000 You could be eligible for up to $150,000 of funds if you had more damage than you had money from insurance. However, there's a couple of catches. One, if you take the money, you're promising that you're going to be back in the structure within a year. You have to be back living there in a year, or you owe all the money back with interest, okay? Um, so that's, that's, that's tough. Like, cause how, do you, how can you orchestrate rebuilding a house in New Orleans if you're living in, you know, D.C., right? So that's tough. There's more, which makes sense, right? Because, you know, you don't want people getting money for houses that aren't theirs. The problem with the ninth ward is a lot of those homes went to their, there's one on the right, there's a kill mural here on the right with the trombone. Um, another one on the right here. Um, so in the ninth ward especially, houses went from, you know, parents to kids, or parents to, or grandparents to grandkids without going through active secession. 
So you need to hire a lawyer to so file an act of secession or two, and City Hall and the records have been flooded. But thank God the fish, you know, the aquarium was dry. Um, but the other and the biggest problem with the road home is you're only eligible for funds up to your home's assessed value. And the assessed value for Ninth Ward, the average assessment was $70,000. So if your home had $140,000 of damage, your assessed value is, is 70, way. you're only eligible for 70. Mm -hmm. And even if you hired a lawyer and you were able to prove that your house, you're only gonna get 70 from the government, where does the other 70 come from? Because now you're almost almost carless, and by the by, the time they sort of fix it, stolen or whatever, uh, so to actually see one in the wild, it's kind of a big deal. But there's only two left, like you know, in the wild in New Orleans. <laughs> oh, that's cute. What's she doing? Oh, I guess it's yeah. worth it. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Like land, what's our land? 